<laughs> so we, we started this platform to help entrepreneurs to have conversations that entrepreneurs should be having to have sort of mastermind, the mastermind you didn't know that you needed. So, and I'm, on, I'm in the hunt around the country and I'm sure we will go out of the country as well as the year goes, that's the plan. Yeah. But to have conversations with people out of the country to hear how they are cracking it, how they figured it out and conversations with amazing individuals like yourself. Award-winning advertisers, <laughs> actors, entrepreneurs, content creator, comedian, speaker. Is there anything I'm missing out? Uh, no, I think you got it. You got it, yeah. How does it feel when you hear that nice long list? Because it sounds so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, I don't, I don't even know. I think it's, there's, there's a sense of uh, acceptance, like, I've built each of each and every one of those facets. So I'm like, yes, yeah, that's, that's right. Me. That's cool. Um, but it still is surreal. It's still very surreal. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Like sometimes I don't believe it. I'm like, when you look back, cause you're fairly young. I don't feel it, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> when you look back your, uh, at your career mm. and how you got here, what are some of the key milestones that our audience need to know about you that make you proud about the work that you've done? So I think even if you talk about like having, having the introduction that uh, you so gracefully gave me, um, and it's, it's all kind of worked out of a period of about six or seven years. And I'll take it back to, yeah, seven years ago, I wasn't in any shape or form going to end up like this. Okay. Um, uh, if, if, yeah, if I'm cor correct in the timeline, it's about seven, eight, seven years ago, um, I was walking down Bitcoin to go and get a job at, at, as a waiter at Baron in my Mr. Price shoes. Um, okay. And luckily that didn't work out. <laughs> so I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't cut it really as, as a waiter at the time. And so I had to, I had to look for like. Oh, so you got the job? I got, I got into training, oh. but then the training was frustrating me because we were learning the same thing over and over again kind of thing. And okay. I, was, I was like, guys, I don't have to get taught this every day. Teach me one thing once. And then let's move on. Like, I want to be done with training after a week. And they wanted to do three <laughs> weeks training. So I left and I desperately needed a job. So I was like, I also didn't know what I was doing. I was going, man. Did you have dependence at the time? Uh, no dependence. Um, but I was living with my wife's, my, my now wife's uncle. Okay. Um, so at the time I was going, now I'm staying at the uncle's house. Brother doesn't have a job. <laughs> He's he got no prospects of a job. Um, and then one day you want to ask to, to be married. <laughs> so I thought, hey, I need to work fast. Um, so if you talk about like achievements and milestones and that, uh, for a long time, I was a quiz master, yeah. um, in and around this area actually. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things after uh, almost suffering a bit of depression and wondering what I was doing with my life, um, I got approached by some guys, um, and they said, Hey man, we've been coming to your quiz for like six months and we yeah. love it. We love the thing that you do and everything. What was I building there? Uh, I'd go to the, to the pub or the restaurant or whatever, and then I'd ask questions. So we'd say, okay, who was the president of what, what, what ah. in such a year? And what is the fastest car in the world? And that sort of thing. People come in small groups, they sit with their friends, they play, and then there's a win at the end of the night. But that's pretty much what I was doing all the time. Um, mm. And I, I was frustrated because I was going, how is this my life? I'm asking questions in a pub. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but someone came to me and they said, yeah, man, we are, we're at one of the big uh, firms up the road and we always come down for quiz and we just, you know, we appreciate the fact that you're always fun and bubbly, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they said, come and do some gigs at our office. Okay. And that's when things started to lift. And that's where I kind of got that first pat, pat of recognition to say, hey man, what you've been doing is cool. And so, yeah, I started doing that. And then all of a sudden so I was- This was a paid gig now. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So it was be, it was paid all along, but now we're getting corporate paid. And if anyone knows, corporate paid is corporate, cool. Corporate paid and it is nice. <laughs> yeah. So, but that was the I, first. I felt step. it this one time when mm. I used to have I used to have a workshop around finance, mm. right? Financial literacy, and a corporate called me to quote per employee. First of all, I used to have like a standard price. The yeah. workshop cost this much, so however many people are there, I didn't care. Yeah. Right? That was me. They call me and said, how much are you charging per head? Right? And then I'm thinking, All right, so let me inflate the price a bit because it's corporate. And when they looked at the code, you know, and someone looks at it and wonders, mm. are you serious? Yeah. 
And she just said, is that it? Okay. And then all of a sudden you think to yourself, I thought that was me inflating it. We we have a joke that when you send a quote and the customer says, yes, right away, you've made a mistake. (laughs) Uh, But believe me, I felt it. So so you you are with these guys, they, can I safely say they discover you? Or is there someone that you give that to? Um, No, I'm not too sure if anyone actually discovered me. Um, But there are, there are very key people along the way. And it's groups of people who have hung around, um, that I've hung around with over the last seven years, who have just sort of seen me progress. And it's the same, like I said, it's the same people that did the quiz. They said, hey, come and do a corporate gig, yeah? And these are guys that I hang out now with. Um, it's the same guys who I talk business with now. We talk business differently um, <laughs> compared to the, the young man that they used to know kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the very first milestone. And then from there, I think... Um, over the last couple of years, I've obviously moved into voiceovers. So last year, I won an award for best commercial uh, radio performance in Africa. In Africa. Yeah. So that was, that was incredible. Um, and we're up against like your big, big, big guys in Egypt and all over the place. Um, and so it was, that was really, really, the, yeah. What, do you, what did that mean for you? Though? Again, it's that recognition, man, because I think a lot of the time in the creative space, when it's just you, you're plugging away alone and it's very hard to know how well you're doing and like uh, i say when it comes to um when it comes to numbers it's cool to see a video or something that you made go far and wide and everything that's great but sometimes you don't get those numbers and you can't let that affect you uh, because the golden rule of everything is you never know who's watching and i had a cool run in last year we had to do i had to MC a bus party uh, for lunch bar in kulichana and uh, as the MC, I went downstairs to meet him, bring him up and, you know, okay. tell him what we're doing for the day. And as, he, as we were approaching each other in the basement, he shouted out first. He said to, he said to uh, his, his manager, there, he's like, look who this is. And I was like, <laughs> look who who is. Yeah, we're talking about yeah, yeah. And he was like, hey, man, I've been watching your videos. They, they're dope. And I was like, no, but you Kuli Chan, <laughs> what are you talking about? You've been watching my videos. Like. I didn't even know we have got the same internet. I thought like, you know, those, <laughs> those famous people have like a different internet or something. Um, so, you know, even if you're getting a handful of views, someone out there influential might be watching it. And that's, that's, that's a cool thing. I think that's a cool golden rule, especially because I think we're setting this up to help entrepreneurs. Mm. And one of the frustrations that they will have, and I know this personally now as well, when you're starting with content creation, and with advertising and you're not getting the numbers, it is a strange. Yo. And trying to figure out why, trying to figure out the why is always the thing is you go, I'm putting in the effort, things look nice, things sound nice, why, why, why? And it, it sometimes is the smallest thing. It's the smallest pivot, uh, you know. Um, you've become quite the, uh, the content creator and advertiser mm, and mm. consultant to companies that want to improve their advertising. Some hire you. Mm. When you look at small businesses trying to do the same thing, though, what mistakes do you see? Um, I think partnering with the wrong people. So there's a big thing going on with the world at the moment where we see someone who's in the spotlight, we go for them quickly. Okay. And that's the person. And this is a double-edged sword in the sense that even, even as a, and I hate being called an influencer, um, <laughs> I'd rather be a brand <laughs> partner or something. I don't want to influence people to, to buy things. I, I'd rather let you see um, the what? things that I use every day and I'll tell you that these are great things and um, you know, you'll see me using them and therefore you have a good understanding of the quality and, and all that, but I don't want to influence you unnecessarily. Um, okay. But what brands might do is they say, this person is the flavor of the month, let's go for them. Then you end up sending them product, you give them a big paycheck, they make you one video. Their audience isn't following them to find out about your gardening company. Mm. If, if, it's, if it's young ladies that are the audience or whatever, maybe they live in a flat. They're not at that point <laughs> in their lives where gardening. So you now you've sent someone your product. You've spent way too much money. They've posted a video. So everyone's checked. We've checked all the boxes, but there's no return on investment for you. Um, and so I think it's, it's worthwhile looking at people who are 
within your space, people are, who are, um, you know, consistent with your subject matter and, um, yeah, it's not always about if, following. If I'm a small business mm. and I'm on a budget, is there like a, tick, a checklist that I can use to choose a brand partner? Yeah, I think, I think a following is important, but a huge following isn't important. What the, I think the main key, at least from my perspective, is engagement. So there's no point in uh, pursuing someone who's got 100,000 followers, but when they post things, only 10 people engaged. get involved in the conversation. You're better off with a guy who's got 5,000 followers, but those 5,000 followers love what he does. They are there for anything he posts or recommends or something like that. So, so the one thing you check is you go to the influencers page, check engagement. Check engagement. That'll, that'll tell you what people are interested in, how they're interested in, how likely they are to um, take this person's advice. If, if it's someone who's posting, hey guys, this product is cool and everyone in the comment section is saying, ah, rubbish, I've tried that, that thing is months. You're going, okay, this guy's audience doesn't trust it. <laughs> so let's, let's, not, let's not get him on board. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the number one thing, and I've seen so many brands do it, um, I've, I've been hired after they've picked influencers and they said, oh, we sent so-and-so a whole product. It cost us 80 grand and they posted nothing. And I'm going, yeah, but that's not their audience. So yeah, whoever you're picking, make sure they have the audience that you. They have the relevant sent. audience and the audience is engaged. What if we flip the script to a small business owner who is creating the content, mm. but they are not getting the engagement? How, what do they change? So that, that is a tricky one because I think we've all been there where we're going, what is it that I'm doing um, that isn't punching through the roof? And I think it's small things. It's, first of all, it's consistency. So yeah, if you only started yesterday or <laughs> last week or something, um, I can tell you I've still got videos in my first year that only got 400 views. Like over, yeah. over like three months, they got 400 views. Um, okay. And so... And it took work. It took work to make those things. I had to do research. I had to think of jokes. I filmed it, edited, you put it up. Um, luckily at the time, 400 views, I was like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> uh, now if I get 400 views, I'm like, hey, I've seriously messed up someone. But uh, it's to keep, it, uh, it's persistence. Um, look at what's happening in your comment sections. Look what your feedback is. And try, yeah, I think just try pivot. Um, keep things exciting. Um, yeah, I think if you can, if you so, can improve on your quality of, of visual and audio, I think audio is always a big thing. If you're doing things and you, you want to make sure one thing sells, make sure your audio is good um, if you're okay. in that talking thing, yeah. I, I, like, I like the consistency, definitely. Mm. What I'm thinking though is when you look at your old pictures, the 400 that mm. you were celebrating at the time, do you mm. think there's an element of at the time you are not as good? Is there yeah. anything like that or you feel you were good, just not known? I think I was good. I still had a lot to learn and I hadn't quite delivered to uh, the audience what they were looking for. So even though I thought it's what, what people wanted to see, I still had to tweak and change and um, it was a progression. And then eventually I got to a space and there was one video uh, in particular, I was talking about load shedding and that. That was my first 100,000 view video. Oh. And then I thought, aha, I see. People want a bit of reality and comedy mixed in, like a, as a messaging thing. Mm -hmm. And so that was my, I, I saw, okay, that's the key here. Let me see how I can refine that. For you, the key was mixed comedy, reality, which is pick on something that's trending already mm. that people are talking about and they're familiar. How do I balance or how does a small business getting into this balance that aspect to still being relevant and educating the client, the customer about the product that they're selling? Yeah. There's that. And then there's the other side. Do you feel it's better for a company to just engage and educate and entertain and not talk too much about their product? Just build an audience or sell. Always talk about your product. So I think this is going to tie into um, some other points uh, along the way, but I think the important thing is our biggest asset and commodity at the moment is time. 
Yeah. We're being advertised to all day, every day, wherever you look on your phone, people are, people are trying to shove an advert in front of you. So the key thing here is to give me something of value for my time. Um, I will watch your product, but then give me something. Let me laugh. Let me feel something. Let oh, me learn something. That's how you look at it. Um, What's the value to the client? Mm. If, if they're not, so basically you're saying, even if the client is not going to buy, they still need to get some value from that for time that they time. invested. So you've given, you've, you've taken 30 seconds of my time. I want to laugh, feel or something from that. So now as the, as the business, you need to balance that you give the, the, the consumer <laughs> something, but also some information. Um, and also I, I always think there's, you're better off giving someone a hook or leaving them with enough that they know where to go to find information, but not too much that they think they know enough and they're not going to follow it up. So leave them with a bit of a hook that they go, I heard that ad and now I'm intrigued. I have to go to the website because the website can have all the information that they'll ever, ever need mm -hmm. there. But in a 30 second, you only have enough time to give them something and some information. So and leave them with a little bit of uh, intrigue. Mm. Even if they're not going to buy, they need to just thank you for the video at least. Mm. Well, the thing is, we're all playing, we're playing a long game. So, mm. you know, even if we uh, talk, uh, talk to some, some car guys and car journalists and stuff, you, um, you can give people pointers about how to buy their first car, which means today I might not be in that position, not even this year, maybe. Yeah. But next year when I'm looking to buy a car, I mm. go, you know, I'd, I watch all those videos on that platform. I'm going to go to that platform to go and buy my car because I'm familiar with those guys. Um, so it's planting an egg uh, or planting a seed, should I say, um, that in a two years time, that person is potentially a client lined up. Okay. Yeah. All right. So one fear that I see some people might have on, for example, picking up on a trend. Mm. If there are already a lot of content creators doing the same thing, yeah. it means there's going to be a lot of content around it and the fear would be what if I'm not as good as the others that are picking up on this trend. Don't I just expose myself faster? Mm -hmm. so, so what you're asking is if, you, if, you, if you're trying to make content that lots of other people are making, how should you approach that? How do you, if you're afraid that, you're, one, you are not going to stand out, or mm. if you do, you stand out for the wrong reasons? Well, first of all, rule number one, don't stand up for the wrong reasons. Um, <laughs> but but that's, that's, a very, that's a very relevant question because it's something that all content creators are facing. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to do a cooking segment, there's 100,000 people doing a cooking segment, guys. Mm -hmm. If you want to do a car review, there's 100 guys <laughs> doing a car review. So there's always going to be a number of people doing the thing that you want to do. Yeah. The question comes in is, yeah. Do you think you can do it better than them? What flavor can you bring? And it usually comes down to personality. Um, if you're a personality, or if you're a person who has a type of personality that just is infectious or something, and you don't have to waste too much energy doing that, you're probably going to be above the rest of the people. And I mean, I don't know. Some if you people, don't? If you don't, then find a way to formulate or, or structure your content in a way that it can be interesting. Um, Try and find a way. I mean, if I think of like Top Gear, Top Gear is a perfect example. Yeah. There's how many talk shows are about cars going around in the world? And Top Gear comes along and they say, instead of testing cars around the track, let's race around some pianos and let's race <laughs> blindfolded and let's do. <laughs> so just take whatever it is that you want to do and try and turn it on its head somehow. Add a, add a different uh, spin on it, even if it's. Even if it's strange, people like strange. People like mm. um, the way that other people do things differently. And I think we can see that um, on lots of content creators um, where they've, they've taken something completely normal. There's the, the Hot Ones. I don't know if you've seen that YouTube channel. No. Uh, hot no. Ones, they the interview um, celebrities of Hot Wings. Is it? Yeah. And they've got millions of followers. They get millions of views. And What's like, different? Because that's, What's, so, it sounds basic to me. It's on paper, on paper, they walked into a boardroom and said, okay, my grand idea, I'm going to get celebrities. I'm going to ask them questions while they eat hot wings. You're going, oh, yeah, that's, I that's, saw, that's, I saw yeah. one of, I think it was Shaq. Yeah. yeah. And he was trying and they were quite hot. Yeah. He was trying to be, to hold the school. Yeah. And, but I'm those saying, those are the guys. Those are the guys. 
and they've got millions and millions of views and now they've branched out to hot sources. It's ridiculous, but that's a two-line concept. Yeah, but that brings me to a point that you it's something that you do really, really well, mm. but I don't know where, what place someone like me or another entrepreneur would have to tap into to access it, thinking out of the box. Because yo, some of your content, it's like, I watch it in, and as for so, how did you come up with that idea? Yeah, I know. In the first place. Mm. No, sometimes I wonder about myself. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I watch some of my old content back and I'm going, right, you need, you need help. But that's, that's what people are there for. People, uh, life is very serious also. Um, people want to be taken away and just, I think we've got lots of problems also. And to see them in a new light, to see an old problem presented in a new way just gives you a chance to look at it and go you know what we could actually find a solution to this okay. um, instead of being just told the same thing so how do i become creative then oh so that's when that's it comes uh, to advertising, if if it's something that i've not been doing is the advice that you have for someone who's getting into it mm. and just to increase to boost their creativity i think it's an input output scenario in that um, read a lot, watch a lot of stuff that's out there and with that information mm, and, and a little bit of know-how and, and see what other people are doing. And then I know this, this is easier said than done. Put your own unique spin on it. Um, one thing that I've found, uh, and it's probably the reason why I was able to create content is because I was, um, I was bored, <laughs> didn't have a lot going on. I didn't get the waitering job, you know, um, so a lot of creativity comes in a bit of peace and boredom, I think. Okay. Um, and that's one thing that I struggle with at the moment is because now my diary's filled up. I, I don't have that time where I just, I'd sit on the couch, <laughs> nothing going on and go, that's a good idea. Let me go film that. Now it's like meeting, 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 shoot, 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 shoot. Then uh, someone says, have you got an idea for this? Actually, like, that's, that's the life of an entrepreneur now. Mm. Go, 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 go. And they, uh, they will have, the same feeling. Yeah. What, when will I get the time? Mm. When I get the space to have that brilliant idea just pop. Exactly. Because I'm always all systems go every day. Yeah. How, how did you strike the balance for yourself? I, I haven't struck the balance. It's, you're still working on it. <laughs> I'm still working on, 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 on that balance. But I think it, with, with that said though, is if you, if you are a person who happens to find themselves with a bit of time on their hands, use that time effectively. This, where you, you're, you're, you'll be in a relaxed state or hopefully you can get yourself into a relaxed state, uh, relaxed state. I know life has its pressures, but if you are blessed with time, use it, use it to, to try and think and um, write down your ideas. That's a big mistake I've made is I have a good idea and I go, Ooh, I'm going to unpack <laughs> this idea later. And then you don't post lunchtime it and you forget. Mm. And so write down your ideas because also you'll circle back to me to that. so many times. <laughs> it's a bad one. Come out of the shower and you are on fire. Yeah, and you, you can feel the idea that this, this is going to be good. Oh, it's, it's fire ideas. And by the time you've got your shirt on, you're going, what was the, <laughs> what was the amazing idea, by the way? Yeah. So yeah, the, the, how to become creative. I, I can't say with certainty, but I think it is an input output scenario. Give your mind something to work with give your mind uh, different scenarios words um uh, little ideas to to work with and and it runs in the background and that's why i say give yourself some time to just sit and be at peace be in the garden that's when so am i right to say it's also okay to as an entrepreneur to know that you're not on your own you can brainstorm with your team you can brainstorm mm. with your friends yeah is um, it a safe thing to do Look, that case on case basis, I think you need to know, you need to know your friends. Um, <laughs> hey, look, we all got one or two friends who'll run away with your idea. And then six years later, you've got a cat, cat Williams scenario saying Cedric ah, Stolle's jokes, you know, <laughs> we, 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 we never know. Um, so I think that, that comes down to you and who you trust, but there's definitely merit in, um, sitting with people and bouncing ideas around. It's my favorite part of trying to come up with ideas. Now I have a, a business partner at my studio and when I get a brief that I run and I said to him, okay, man, what about this? And he goes, not that. He's like, that's a terrible idea, but 
off that. What if we did this? And then I go, oh, I like where you're going. I can make it better still. And so you just, you've got this uh, elevating thing that happens between two people that you just, you just don't get when it's just you alone. So look, I, I've, I've written a lot of my stuff by myself. Um, I actually write all my stuff by myself. But if you can collab and work with somebody else, ooh, possibilities are endless. When it comes to advertising, what metrics do you measure to know that the, the advert did well? So advertising's interesting in the sense that, you know, traditionally we've only ever had TV um, and TV is a, it's a unique beast. You've got to have um, proper budget because you have to, you have to film on certain cameras and, and hit all the specs and everything. So yeah. uh, traditionally we've always had to have huge budgets for, mm. for TV. Now with streaming services and everything, you know, people can fast forward through TV. So I, I can't, I can't bash TV advertising because I do <laughs> TV ads. So please still hire me. But don't want to lose. Yeah. <laughs> but there's definitely merit in social media advertising. You know, that's where a lot of people get their news from. And so they're spending a lot of time on there. And through that, we were offered information and data that we can't get off traditional TV or at least not as accurately. And that is, how many views you've got? How many okay. likes and dislikes did you have? What were people's opinions of your advert and, and that sort of thing? So, that so you all, collate those. Yeah. The opinions from the engagement. Yeah. And you can see in real time. You have a system around that or you pick them up manually and just say. So I think a lot of, a lot of companies will have systems um, mm -hmm. in place for that. I generally, I will send data to people and then they will take. Uh, they will pick from that what they, they want to see and, and everything like that. So if I do a video for someone that's on my platform, by the time it's run for maybe two weeks, then I say, okay, cool. This is all our stats. Uh, you, can, you can calculate uh, from there what your okay. ROI is or something like that. That's brilliant. If a small business is approaching you, for example, and saying, Timba, I want to work with you. Mm. Who are you not looking for? What are those bad clients that you would not want? <laughs> I'm not looking for... If you are this person, if you think like this, if you want this, I'm not. If anyone guy. who rocks up and says, I just need a quick small. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. <laughs> There's no such thing as a quick small. Um, no, I think, I think uh, doors are open to, to all conversations. Um, right. I think just as a, yeah, as a general rule, I'm always happy to have conversations with people. Um, and then once we've spoken, we can ascertain whether this is a good fit for the two of us or not. And then I think in that, yeah, like I just said, if it's a good fit, if I understand your brand and I can see some comedy and, and stuff behind it, let's go, let's run with it. Um, I've got a, a bathroom company that's just approached us now for, for a couple of videos. And I, when I'm walking around, I'm like, I'm thinking of so many funny bathroom scenarios. I'm like, this is going to be amazing. Um, but at the same time, there's sometimes there's stuff that's not so great to make jokes from. And if I have to work extra hard, um, you know, some, some, some content matter is just very hard to make funny. Mm. Um, yeah. And stats, <laughs> it's very really hard to, to say we've got a 32%. You could make one or two, but not 20. Yeah. Yeah. Like not for a whole sheet. So it's to say, okay, cool. Let's, let's see where I resonate with. And it's not to say because I didn't come up with an idea or an advertising strategy that the next guy might not, um, so I'm not, I'm not the all knowing genius or something. I'm just saying for myself, we've had initial conversation off the bat. It's, it's probably going to be a lot more work for me to make this happen for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and therefore I've got to justify the time, which push, pushes up cost and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, you might be better off. There's a dude that might come up with a great concept in four minutes and it's easy for him to shoot and film and put together for you. So, mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts or your advice to a small business when they yeah. approach an influencer, for example, mm. or a brand partner? What should they have? Uh, how should they structure that conversation? Because I know the confusion for many that consider it is mm. how much will they charge me and how do I know if that's going to be the right price to pay? Oh, yeah. So there's, there's a couple of platforms. Um, there's one platform that I used before where you can put in, uh, the influencer name, um, and what you want from them. So if you say one post, one reel, then it'll give you an amount they should be charging. Um, I'll, I'll give you the link. Maybe we can just yeah, share it. We'll share the link in the description. Yeah. And so that'll tell you, okay, cool. According to this person's following and engagement, 
this is what you should pay them and this is your potential uh, stats in terms of what you can look forward to. Um, so I think that's a good guideline. But then we also need to understand that the, there's uh, extra costs around that. So um, if you want an influencer to give you exclusivity, so let's say you've got a chicken shop, you want an influencer to do a chicken video for you. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. But they might get approached by a different chicken shop next week. You probably want to stop that from happening. And actually from an influencer's perspective, they probably shouldn't be doing that for their own brand because now it just makes it look like they yeah. go anywhere. But we're talking about the business for now. So then you want to make sure that they, you retain them for a couple of weeks or something. So that's going to add a little bit of extra cost onto that because they're now potentially You're missing out You're paying now on. for exclusivity. Yeah. So that they covered for the work they might miss out on in the next couple of weeks. Then we talk about whether you're using a video to post on your own platform or if they're posting um, on their platform. So um, oh, sometimes yeah, I get approached. Yeah. You know, so sometimes I get approached. People say, can you feature in a video for us? It's just going on our website. Cool. That's fine. I don't mind that. Uh, this is the cost. If somebody says, we want you to make a video and post it on your platforms, and I've got to charge them to access my audience. Um, so that pushes the price up per, okay. per platform. Um, of course, there's also a usage time. So we might just say, okay, that video is allowed to exist on my platform for three months. It can't be there forever, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you you got you to gotta charge for... There's usage time as well. That, mm. that I didn't even know. Mm. So you would, or the influencer would specify how long they'll have it on for. Yes. Before they delete. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like, uh, uh, deleting... Sounds malicious. I often don't delete my stuff because I feel like it might hurt my stats in terms of, you know, if I get, if I do a, a, an ad for someone and it does well, I don't really want to delete it. Um, mm. I want to keep those views and, and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a reality of it. So there's, there's lots of little things that add up the price quite quickly um, in terms of exclusivity, um, in terms of usage, and then, yeah, what platforms and where. So your take on whether or not this is the way to go for small businesses, do you think it's, it's an effective strategy for them yes. to consider? Yes. I think, I think as long Looking as Looking at all the other options, because they could use, outside of brand partners, they could just do paid ads, they could do email marketing, they could do mm -hmm. a whole host of other things. What makes you feel this is highly potent? So I think it comes um, down sea of options, yeah. Mm. And I think all those all those options have a place. I think you almost got to look at it like um, this is your bundle of tools, and then you're looking at a pie chart. And you're going to use each tool with a percentage. So you're going to say, okay, thirty percent of this is going to be influencer marketing. We're going to do a twenty percentile on on email marketing and mm. and whatever. But obviously specific to your, uh, again, subject material. Distribution, selling if, online and all those things. Yeah. If, if you are a finance thing, maybe finance people are more inclined to read. So an email thing might do better in that, in that scenario. Mm -hmm. um, if you're maybe into music and that sort of thing, people want to listen to music and they're on the move and stuff. They don't have time to read a long email. So maybe minimize that and then push that to influencers. Um, and the reason we talk about, uh, or the reason I think influence Influencer marketing is a good idea. If you're working with the right influencers, you've got people who are giving advice. Um, if you've got a health person or a guy who loves cars and his audience is about cars, if you're a tire brand, those are the people that you want to access. And so instead of wasting a huge budget on, on a wide cast net that's going to bring you three or four people in, okay. you go straight to a source, your niche is there, you say, okay, I've got a hundred car guys here. 20 of them might come back and buy tires as opposed to throwing out a, a net over half a thousand or half a million mm -hmm. people. You might also only get a 10, <laughs> a 10 or 20 people back. So yeah. Let's help some young people mm. who, who got started with TikTok, got started with Instagram and all of those things. And they've built an audience, but they're not monetizing. Mm. What advice do you have? Okay, so monetization on social platforms, um, that's quite an interesting one for me because for a long time, I didn't bother with it. I just enjoyed okay. making my videos and I was like, I don't, I don't need the money for it because when you get the money, you feel the pressure and now you've got to be consistent. So I left that for a long time, but in the last sort of two years, we've, we've seen what we can do. So um, 
you know, particularly on Facebook. So I'm just going to speak from my experiences, um, particularly on Facebook. Yeah. There's ad revenue that's added. So in between, if your videos are performing well, they'll be able to shove ads in between. They'll put you on that main uh, scrolling page. And then in between there's, there's ads and you can get paid for, for that. Um, that's something you turn on yeah. by yourself. So yeah. you opt into it. So there will be a baseline um, sort of uh, some markers that you need to hit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Prerequisites. You've got to have like a certain number of followers. I think it's about a thousand. Um, and then I think you need to hit a certain engagement uh, prerequisite. And then if you can hit that, um, it, is, it is there on Facebook. It'll tell you exactly what you need to be able to be um, included in the in the so once uh, you've turned stuff. it on you change nothing you just continue to what you've been doing once you've turned it on if you if you're eligible you just keep keep pushing it and then it's up to you i mean i could make a heck of a lot more money on facebook if i wanted to but i, I don't have the capacity to make more videos than i currently <laughs> can at the moment but it's it's all up to you then and if you if you're eligible then you can just start ramping it up um, make your content better and better but the big thing that I realized out of creating content is the secondary exposure to the market. So now a lot of people um, approach me because of my content. So maybe I'm not making a million bucks off my content per se, okay. that ad revenue, but people are saying, oh, we saw a video that you did about Woolworths bags. Okay. Come do a Woolworths ad or come do an ad about bags or yeah, we want to invite you to. You probably yeah. Once off. Yeah. yeah. And so it's what. You're exposing yourself to the market and um, agencies that do advertising, they're always looking. Um, they're always looking for ideas. And I think we're almost starved of ideas at the moment because, uh, you know, we, we, we adopted the sort of PC culture. So everyone's too scared to say anything they're not supposed to say. And it's forced us to be very uncreative in what we create in terms of advertising. And so people are now, you know, they're sitting around and they're looking to influencers to go, where's the funny, where's where are people, because um, they've already got a stamp of approval from the public. So they're saying, yeah. this guy's funny. The public love him. He can't mess up. So they reach out like that. So if, if, you, if you're in the space and you've got followers, try and think of a way that you can be valuable uh, to a brand and start at home. Start it with brands that you already know and love because um, they'll come on and they'll say, oh, this person's using the skincare product. Um, and they've got a whole lot of followers. Great. Maybe we should reach out to them. And, uh, you know, in time. Is that will. the same as UGC? It's a term I've heard a lot. I've not looked into it. User-generated content. Mm, yeah. So I think, I think that, that UGC can be a very one-off kind of thing where a brand will collect a whole lot of videos from people, put it into one and put it out into the world. Um, what I think as a... Uh, as an influencer or trying to be a brand partner, you want to push that for more of a long-term thing. Okay. Um, it's great to get paid once off for sure. But if, if it's a brand that you're living, try and try and push for that opportunity to be um, associated with that brand long-term and see where that can take you. How would that strategy look like for, for the same young person on platforms like TikTok? Mm. Um, I think if they ever reach out to you to say, hey, can you do a video on XYZ? Say, sure. But can't we do a little campaign? Can we do a little campaign? Can I do three videos for you? And this is almost being preemptive and you, you kind of have to imagine all of this stuff before that day comes. Um, you know, you've got to put yourself in, in your, you've got to have the, that shower conversation that when X brand comes to me, I am going to pitch them everything. I'm going to give them this, this and that. So that when the brand comes and says, we want to get one video from you, you say, okay, I can definitely do that. But um, do you guys mind taking a look at this? I've got a, three-step uh, <laughs> skincare plan. I've got a da-da-da-da-da-da. Um, I've got a what to make if you're doing a cooking show. I've got Easter idea, Valentine's Day on a budget, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And they'll go, hang on, this kid's proactive. They've already got their content calendar lined up and everything. <laughs> it takes the work of us as a, as a marketing agency. So let's hook let's this kid up for, this kid. for longer term, yeah. And so maybe once a month you find them calling on you and saying, okay, once a month we want a video from you a cool creative idea. And then you, you build that long-term relationship and hey, who knows where that can lead. When it comes to uh, educational content, how do you think small businesses should approach it if, as they are building an audience? So without being boring with long infomercials. Yeah. 
So I almost think this is interesting with advertising where you come in with one idea, then you, you show your brand a little bit, then you pull out kind of thing. Um, and when it comes to educating, and it's something that I touched on earlier, is to provide somebody with something mm. and have your brand associated to it. So um, if you are, let's say, well, let's use cars again. Talk about, uh, let's do a quick video about, hey guys, do you know what a residual is? Boom, 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 boom. This is what a residual is. So that's for anyone. That's just general information for anyone. It's not boxed into uh, uh, you your, because you are our pro, uh, your brand, brand, your whatever. This is just a PSA for anyone who wanted to know, if you wanted to know. This is how residual works. Blah, blah. Anyways, this information was caught, uh, brought to you by <laughs> Tempest Cars. Okay, bye. <laughs> so now I'll go, okay, I like going to this Tempest Cars website because I learn about stuff, you know. Um, and it's short and it's sweet, so always keep it short and sweet. But like I said, um, at the end of it, I'm not buying a car anytime soon, guys. But mm. the day that that comes, I've already got a loyalty. I, I feel a sense of trust already with your brand. So if you're in the position to educate people about, if you've got a lawnmower company, teach people about how to cut lawns and how um, just general information that's accessible and interesting to everyone. Mm -hmm. And you have your brand associated with it just neatly, subliminally in there. And then who knows when the day comes and that person needs X product. So it's always prioritize giving value first yeah. to the person that's not going to, to even buy. Mm. For potential, for the potential. That's the right? mindset you, you're saying we should be having. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's obviously not specifically, I'm not going specifically to people who won't buy. I'm saying, no, I'm, I'm saying in general, do yeah. not worry if the person buys now because mm, they might later. buy later or they might have a friend that they say, oh, check this out. Mm. But just to say anyone who invests in 30 seconds should benefit something. Something. Yeah. I think, I think that's the thing about any advertising. Give the consumer something for their time. And I mean, I have to, uh, as, as a voiceover artist, I have to do some hard sell voiceovers where we're like, hey, hey. Get the new da 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 put this down money, blah, 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 blah. get it, get it now, now. And you go, yo, I feel bad because I've just shouted at people for 30 <laughs> seconds. Um, it's, it's, it's wild. And as a consumer, you're riding in your car, you having someone <laughs> shout at you like, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. like, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. But if somebody, you know, came on and gave you a little cow. laugh, yeah, even if, even if I chuckled after the ad and went, <laughs> that was quite clever or something. It's just a little trade-off. I don't feel so bad for listening to that ad or I don't feel cheated. But when you're shouting at me for 30 seconds, I feel cheated. I'm like, hey, I could have switched stations or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's something with you though. Uh, storytelling. Mm. First, how does, how does someone get good at it? And second, who inspired you? Who did you learn from? Because you do it so well. Is it something that you're <laughs> born with? Or... Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think it's something I was born with and I think reading stories when I was a kid, my parents loved to read us stories. What kind? Um, any, anything and everything. I think for a long time, my father actually made up stories. Um, he would just sit down and just <laughs> go on his own tangent. <laughs> so none of those stories are even written anywhere or anything, but, um, it's, 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 again, it touches back on that thing of, uh, input output, um, you know, I, I, I heard a lot of stories and read a lot of stories and got told a lot of stories as a kid. And so that's, um, that's what I enjoy doing. And I, I think I know how to adapt that kind of thing. I think telling stories is inherently African. Um, we, it, it hooks us, engages us. Mm, people stay longer watching 100%. if there's a story. That's exactly. But how do we get good at it if you're not? Because uh, I'll tell you, I wrote a book and one of the things that, I never saw myself at any point yeah. right, being a writer because I had the story of I'm not good with writing, mm -hmm. creative writing. From a scar, childhood scar where an English teacher came and read a composition and he was reading it across multiple classes. Mm -hmm. And he says, this is the rubbish that you people are making us mock. So Ooh. when he was reading, by the time he got like halfway mm -hmm. reading, I realized, oh, my, that's my word. And I thought, I'm taking the secret to the grave. <laughs> no one is ever going to know. Because fortunately, he didn't say, this yeah. is who wrote. And so I carried that scar. I avoided 
anything that had to do with creative writing, mm. I chose economics, mathematics, stuff like that. That was me. And then someone challenged me later, a couple of years ago, to write a book. And that brought all of that up. Yeah. yeah. I'm speaking for the person who doesn't believe they're a good storyteller. How do you get good at it? Because you are really good at it. No. <laughs> um, I, I think maybe, maybe a bit of practice. Practice always makes perfect. Um, I think entertaining people, try, try it in small circles. Just go and tell someone a short story. And I think you'll get a feel for how they're, are they holding onto your words? Are they intrigued? You know, if they're losing concentration or something, that's always a sign that <laughs> maybe you either need to hurry the story up or, or, or break it down. But I think if you're doing a formal presentation of a story, um, you always got to strike a balance between keeping things interesting, give detail, not too much detail, um, keep things interesting, keep things flowing, but you also, and this is a trick that we learn in voiceover is you don't want to keep things in the same rhythm, just talking <laughs> in the same thing. And that's why I think the people like the David Attenborough character and even Morgan Freeman, that's why we find them so intriguing is because when they talk, mm. there's a pause. There's a inflection in some places and sometimes they come down and you actually just never know how, how the sentence <laughs> is going to go. So your brain can't get relaxed and fall asleep because it's like, where are we, are we going faster? We're slow. So I'm um, playing with your delivery in, in that sense and keeping it interesting. But I think you have to kind of test it out in your, in your circles, in your friends. And some people know already they're the one who gets, um, elected to tell the story if, if something went down last week at school then like mm. ask this guy because he'll tell it the best <laughs> he covers all the details and everything um so you might already have an inkling that you are that storyteller mm. um so let's formalize it let's go pick some stories go and go and get people around and uh, obviously in the school system you're blessed because we can do orals um, a lot of schools have theater programs and that sort of thing where you can do monologues but monologues are actually excellent monologues are okay. excellent so if you go Explain. onto the internet and look up some monologues and a monologue is basically a one piece delivery. It's just you and you will tell a whole story. And uh, monologues have the ability to be very emotional, very uh, serious and intense. They can be comedic and go and learn a monologue. Recite is there a resource you can refer people to? Um, not a single one, but if you go, um, yeah, if you go on the internet and you just type in free monologues, um, you'll be able to find there'll be tons of websites. Um, all theatre students and all of that have always used monologues for auditions and trying to get into uh, different colleges and that sort of thing. So monologues are a big part of storytelling and, and the entertainment industry. Um, and that's probably a cool thing to try is go and learn a monologue. I didn't know then, about it, eh? Yeah. It's definitely something I'll look Ooh. up. Yeah. For, for, for a personal experience, just to see how I can deliver something in a crazy way, because um, there's mon monologues about some hectic subject uh, some hectic subjects and you have to become that person. So you're no longer you, you are that person who's delivering this thing. And if you can transition into that and make that believable for people that, then you know, you're a storyteller. And oh. at least if you know the monologue, every time you do it, you can try something different and then sharpen your skills. Okay. I'll look into it because that's, that's the next challenge that I have received as well. Beyond writing the past challenge to write the book, I, are you a bigger man than I for, for taking on that task? Come <laughs> no, I think it, it's done well. I just hit in December 2000 copies. Yeah. So, and sure. this was out of social media because I didn't have social media. I only started like last year Yeah, because a friend of mine convinced me to come back into the. I had blacklisted <laughs> myself for 10 years. Wow. Yeah. So there's this thing that I have about social media and I want you to take on it. I always say social media is a tool, a trap, and a toy yeah. to different people. Mm -hmm. It's a trap if you are sad because of it, depressed because of it, unproductive because of it, confused because of it. It exists and it makes you feel bad mm -hmm. and it takes you to a dark place. Mm -hmm. So for you, it's a trap. It's a prison. And it's a prison because you are staying there as if you have no way out. Yeah. It's become that for people. And for me, that's why I blacklisted myself for that 
period because it had become that for me. Mm. I had lost my business and I got into this dark place. And what I was seeing there was just keeping me in a very bad place. So I took it out, yeah. switched it off. It's, I say it's a toy. If for you, you are having fun with it, but you're not progressing because of it. So it's not harming you. Mm. It's just entertaining you, taking a whole lot of your time, but not moving your life forward in any way, mm. which is a neutral perspective for many. But I say it's a tool. If you're making money because of it, you are meeting interesting and engaging people because of it. You're mm. learning, you're building a skill because of it. For, for some people, it's a tool. Yeah. They can monetize it. They can network with it. They can learn skills with it. They can challenge themselves. Yeah. So I think, I think the, the important thing is, is moderation. Um, it's the same thing with anything. It's the same with uh, alcohol or food or anything like that. It's there for you to use however you want to use it, but you have to be conscious about how you use it. Are you using it too much? Um, is it becoming problematic? Is it interfering with your ability to do the other tasks that you need to do on a daily basis? If the answer is yes, then you need to relook really at your relationship with that. Um, I think there was a quote I heard. It said, if you aren't making money on social media, you are the product. <laughs> and that is a hard, hard truth. Um, the fact that I get to make money because I'm, I'm selling my audience in, in, a, in a very frank way. And it's horrible to say that. Mm. But what I would say in, in my defense is that I give my audience a right. laugh mm. for the time that they spend on my platform. And if they happen to see an advert on my platform, they've, they've received many laughs for that small payment kind of mm. thing. So, but in essence, they, they are the product or that's what is for sale kind of thing. So, um, as the person scrolling, you are being sold. Your time is being sold. Um, so it's very careful. You got to be very careful not to lose yourself in it. And uh, to your point, uh, cause to talk about being in that quiz, quiz night situation and I go yeah. online. And I see, okay, this person's got a new car. Oh, he also got a new car. Okay. That's what happened. Oh, they bought a new house. Oh, oh, they've got three kids now. Okay. Oh, sure. You're seeing a concentration of all the best lives, all the best moments of all the best lives mm. lined up for you to see, to feel worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse for yourself. Um, that's super unhealthy. I left social media for a while also, but I, I needed to come back to, to, to work. <laughs> And so what I just do now is I, I just moderate the amount of time that I spend online. Um, I, you know, there's a place on your, on your phones where you can see your screen time on individual apps. Set yourself a limit through there. Yeah, no one ever told me about that. I think I've, someone told me about it two weeks ago. Yeah. And I realized you can set a limit on each app. Yeah. Go and check that. Go and check that out. You'll be, you'll be astonished how much time in a day you spend on something. And then if you think about you know, uh, get, get off, got offered to do a, a degree and I, they say, you know, if you spend two hours a day, two hours a day, I don't have two hours a day, guys. Then you go and you figure out between Facebook, TikTok and Instagram, you've spent two and a half hours a day. You're going, that's two and a half hours. I could be. That's light actually. So when I saw this, above, I know it's a setting on an Android phone. It's just, mm. you go to your setting and check your device health. I think it's device health or something. Mm. I, I've forgotten what it is on Apple, but Apple has it as well. Yeah. I checked and I checked for a couple of friends. My average screen time was above four hours. And yeah. when I checked average screen time for a friend, it was six. Yeah. And there's one who had eight. Yeah. Their excuse was I do part of my work on my phone, but it was concerning nonetheless to realize that you spend that much yeah. on your phone. It's, it's crazy. But now you also understand why marketers are moving to social media and everything. People are spending eight hours on their phone a day. You're going to catch them there before you catch them on their TV. But it is, it is that it, it's, it's very scary. And, um, oh, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how to fix it. You just have to, you have to be strong with yourself and, um, yeah. I think it's something that you say to understand that I'm spending this long on this device. Mm -hmm. What am I missing out on? What am I not doing in my life? Yeah. I mean, even myself, I'm like, Hey, new year, new me. I'm going to be thin this year. You, oh, I'm going to be thin. <laughs> and it's like, go take a 30 minute jog. I don't have 30 minutes in a day guys, <laughs> but I've easily spent 30 minutes on social media. That's, that's 30 minutes. Uh, if, you see, if you see yourself doing two hours, yeah, mm -hmm. do 30 minutes less and go do something for yourself. And, and see if that doesn't uh, improve your situation.
That's powerful. Final words, what advice do you have? Putting shots for entrepreneurs out there when it comes to advertising. Because I'll tell you what happens for many small businesses. They convince themselves that I don't have the budget, mm. but they don't see that they can leverage social media. And now with the way things are, it's cheaper to do it and it's accessible to literally everyone. Mm. Look, I think um, there's, there's so many opportunities. If you have the ability to write even a little bit, you're in a good space because we've got cell phones. Um, I think most of the cell phones can take really good camera uh, or really good footage. And there's an interesting thing um, I often do is I'll shoot adverts on my phone and I don't polish it up too, too much because people, again, we say we're getting advertised to all the time. So people are susceptible to, advertise, uh, to adverts. So if you see something polished on your TikTok, you skip, you skip quickly because <laughs> you're like, I don't want to be adv advertised to you. But something that's a little bit imperfect intrigues people and they'll hang around and they'll watch it. And maybe that's where you... Uh, the whole story behind it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think story is everything. People want to get invested in a brand that connects and resonates with them. So if you have a story to tell, tell that story. Get people connected to your brand any way you can. Um, I think that that's essence of being genuine because you don't want to waste unnecessary energy putting on that front every day. Mm -hmm. If that's naturally your product, if that's naturally you, I'm saying if you're doing your own videos to sell your own product, then go for it. Do it like that. It might be slower in the beginning because you're not putting in front of the camera <laughs> what people want to see, but the people that follow you will be your genuine followers. They're not going to follow you in the moment you say something and then run away. So keeping it genuine. Um, and then I think consistency. If mm. if there's uh, if you're gonna put out one video, even if there's three views, yeah, be be consistent. Um, I mean, three views is three potential sales. Who knows? Um, and then maybe the last last thing is uh, is hey, I went I went blank there. See, this is why my ideas. No, there's something that there's something that someone around what you're saying just now. Mm. Someone put it differently for me because I was saying hundred views and if you that sucks. But they say picture this: if I put you in a workshop setting, because I do a lot of workshops. If I yeah. put you in a workshop setting and I say there's hundred people here that just heard your message, mm. how would that make you feel? Yeah, great. Awesome, because yeah. the average in a workshop is like thirty to fifty yeah. max. In yeah. most of the workshops that I'll do. No, that's, I think so that's, that's I, really powerful. I thought of it as, now it's 100. Yeah. I just spoke to 100. That felt different. Yeah. yeah 100 yeah. views felt different. Yeah. I felt like you a couple of years ago. <laughs> how you felt about 400. <laughs> now you do 100,000, 200,000, 2 million. Yeah, yeah. That's... No, I think your, your potential another. reach, your potential reach is, is, is crazy. And, I think the biggest benefit of having social media in that is you know you can get a real-time update on how people are, are working with your thing. If people are saying, oh, this is a terrible ad, you know that next week you're not going to post the same thing. <laughs> you're going to go and tweak it, whereas if you, maybe if you went to TV, you wouldn't know that or something. Yeah, uh, that's so. a good message to small business owners, mm -hmm. actually. You are getting real-time update mm -hmm. and engagement on what you're doing. You can get advice as well yeah. and feedback. Yeah, 100%. That's something you've said. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. This has been so enlightening. No way. Shout for having me. A couple of things I need to go look up. I think we'll post the links. Monologues will be one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll post the links and it will help someone out there. Yeah, I'm going to go do my 30 minute walk for the day. And then uh, I now, now I have to write a book. So yes. <laughs> Challenge is fun. Is that a yeah. commitment? Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't with us till this time, you're feeling the content and we're going to have a lot of powerful conversations like this to help entrepreneurs because our mission is just to make the journey easier. So from me, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Remember to subscribe and like, share the video. It will go a long way into supporting the channel. Thank you. Bye.